Hey guys, Scripty here with another video, and this one was uh, sent to me over Twitter, tagged me in it, uh, and they made Darth Vader's death meaningless. Star Wars fans couldn't agree more with George Lucas over his biggest criticism for The Force Awakens. George Lucas and fans are on the same page when it comes to their stance on The Force Awakens. Okay. Uh, and this is interesting because I don't, I've heard vague stuff about the sequel trilogy that George has not liked. Um, you know, oh, it's not mine anymore, they, they, the white slavers took it, or the, when he's talking to the kids in the Zoom call, you know, he's like, oh, it's just not mine anymore, whatever, they can do what they want with it, but you don't get a ton of specifics, so this will be interesting. Despite being seen as a step down compared to the original trilogy, George Lucas's prequel trilogy did add something new to the galaxy far, far away, which can't be said for the sequels. While it's 2019's Rise of Skywalker that put the final nail in the coffin for the sequels, which pushed Disney to stray away from the big screen releases, the initial entry to fail to win over Lucas. Well, I think it failed to win over all of us. I mean, it, just nothing made sense. Why was Rey so powerful? Why, what, like, what the heck did we just watch? Like, she just beats up a 20-year veteran and they just flung her into a tree and knocked her out and then she just beats him. Like it, The whole thing is so weird. And, you know, Death Star 3 and it just it just sucked. George Lucas criticized the films for their lack of originality and fans couldn't agree more with that sentiment, especially in the case of The Force Awakens. Uh, for George, it was important that each entry added something new to the franchise and was disappointed to find out that the first entry in the sequel trilogy didn't follow in his footsteps. Directed by J.J. Abrams, The Force Awakens was criticized by fans for being too similar to A New Hope and lacking originality and strong, compelling story of its own. Now, you might say, you know, okay, the EU was not canon uh, to George. And I don't, you know, it wasn't, really. It wasn't like his canon. He made that very clear. He had his own. But he did agree with a lot of the ideas, and one of them was that he said to J.J. on live television was, J.J., what happened, this is after The Force Awakens, J.J., what happened to Darth Vader's grandchildren? As in, you know, he was a fan of the Solo Twins and the and the the next generation. And he also said that as well, that the story was about generations, and it was supposed to be about Darth Vader's kids. And they just didn't do that. They went with Ben, and then Ray. I, I honestly thought, watching The Force Awakens, that Ray was going to be revealed as Ben's sister in the end. And that Leia was going to reveal that to her at the end of the movie after they hugged because she ignored Chewie and hugged her. So I thought, oh, okay, the only reason she could possibly do that is ignore Chewie and hug Ray was if Ray was actually her daughter and they just hadn't told her yet for some reason. Maybe they'd write in some reason they had to protect her from that or something like that. But no, they just they just went with one Skywalker grandchild, grandchild which... Yeah. Anyways, not not what George Lucas wanted. Bob Iger's biography, the Disney CEO, recalled the Star Wars creator's initial response to Episode Seven, revealing that Lucas didn't shy away from showcasing his disappointment, considering incorporating new stories, characters, and technologies with each entry was important for the filmmaker. Disney's way of doing things didn't sit well with him, and that's another thing too. Yeah, he he liked he literally the Star Wars films, both both the OT and the prequels, completely changed movie making. Obviously, the original trilogy, Industrial Light and Magic, they created special effects that nobody had ever seen before, at a quality nobody had ever seen before, and then in the prequels, he brought he sort of donned the age of this of the CGI film. You know, was involved with all types of technological stuff. I uh, I believe Pixar was originally his company as well, and that's a huge, massive leap in movie making. So. It wasn't called Pixar, though. It was called something else. But then they bought up all of his guys, all of his computer software guys and animators and stuff, and started Pixar. But he totally revolutionized filmmaking. You can't deny it. Um, I don't like some of the decisions he makes with his writing, but you cannot possibly deny that. And that stuff was important to him. And yeah, they didn't really do anything new technologically, that's for sure. Disney's way of doing things didn't sit well with him. I wrote, just prior to the global release... Kathy screened The Force Awakens for George. He didn't hide his disappointment. There's nothing new, he said. In each of the films in the original trilogy, it was important to him to present new worlds, new stories, new characters, and new technologies. In this one, he said there weren't enough visual or technological leaps forward. Yeah, I mean, they're back on Tatooine, first of all. White Jakku is basically Tatooine. They did do Starkiller on a snow planet, but we'd already seen a snow planet. This one, of course, was had more trees, I guess, <laughs> than Hoth did. Yeah, he's right. I mean, there just wasn't a, a lot of anything new. 
And the storyline itself was even very similar to, you know, a lot of people call it sort of A New Hope, you know, light or like, you know, cheap A New Hope. Fans couldn't agree more. With the Empire Strikes Back creator, with some stress in the Disney, dropped the ball by playing it too safe and criticized its poor handling of the legacy characters. He's disappointed because there was nothing new, blah, blah, blah. It's quite literally a ripoff of the OT, zero originality. They made Darth Vader's death meaningless when Palpatine was brought back. Absolutely. That, that, one, that one was mind-blowing. And he was right. He's right. Disney played it safe and barely developed the Star Wars universe. I mean, he's right, the sequels added practically nothing new to the universe. The prequels, for all their issues, at least added to the universe, but the sequels did not. That's a very fair take. Although The Last Jedi took the IP in a new and unexpected direction, The Rise of Skywalker did little to ameliorate things and was seen as a huge letdown. Yeah, and and you have to admit The Last Jedi did at least try to do something different, but it was different in literally the worst possible ways <laughs> with Luke the way they, they, they wrote Luke and the Rose and Finn stupid canto bite and the and, and the way Snoke goes out and you don't even know who the heck he is there's nobody you know nothing about him so it, it, yes it went in a different direction which is okay but it's <laughs> I guess I guess what I'm saying is going in a different direction just to go in a different direction isn't good either you want to have a real storyline going forward that makes sense uh, he felt betrayed by Disney's treatment of the IP before selling it to Disney uh, to focus on his personal life and raising his daughter. Lucas had already outlined the theme for the sequel trilogy, which was going to be both the daughter and the grandchildren. Exactly. Although he did submit his stories during his negotiations with Disney, the House of Mouse opted to not go in that direction that Lucas intended, which led the filmmaker to feeling betrayed. Yeah, Leia's far more prominent, I guess, uh, in his... Um, he did have a treatment that had Darth Maul in it, which... I think he probably would have changed. You can't bring him back another time after he gets killed a second time. My word. But yeah, it was supposed to be about Leia, and Leia um, sort of becomes the chosen one in a sense. Like I recall George immediately got upset as they began to describe the plot, and it dawned on him that we weren't using one of the stories he submitted during the negotiations. Now, in the first meeting with him of the star future of Star Wars, George felt betrayed. Well, you know what I'd like to hear from Bob and the people involved? Why didn't they? use some of the stuff from his stories. You know, they went in a completely different direction. I'm curious as to why that was. Was it, was it something to do with he was going to get paid more or something? Or I'm just, or is just like, we don't want you around. George has said that. They didn't really want him around. I just don't get why they didn't at least think about doing that instead of going off on this weird no plan, who's Ray? we don't know, we're still filming the third movie, and we still don't know who she is, and then Palpatine, like, that's that's your storyline that you made up on the fly. It's just really weird. With Star Wars finally set to return to the big screen in the coming years, fans will hope Disney finally brings something new to the franchise. No, we, we really don't, because what they bring that's new is really bad. <laughs> Every time, with the shows, with the movies... What we really want, what fans really want, fans of Star Wars, and I think all you guys would probably agree, feel free to comment, is for them to just sell it and get the heck out of there. And ha bring in somebody else that really cares and just redo the sequels entirely and just form a whole new story. I think that's what most fans want. There are people that like the Disney trilogy, but as I've said all along, if it was different, they would have liked it anyway. They would have liked any anything. There are Star Wars fans, and I know people very close to me that are like this, that just love the idea of it and the lightsabers and it's fun and it's a different galaxy and that, and that's enough for them. So the storyline really doesn't matter all that much to them. It's just, it's Star Wars. And the people that really like the Disney sequels would have liked anything they did. So you're better off to just get rid of it. <laughs> Let somebody else come in and redo everything. But, but they can't now because as we know from the Forbes investigation, they've, made basically no money off of Star Wars. And so if they went to sell... And Lucasfilm's just cratering. I mean, you look at Willow, you look at Indy 5, and then you look at Star Wars and everything else, all the cancelled projects, all the just disarray. People hired, people fired, directors mid-flight getting the boot, all this stuff, solo bombs. They can't sell it. It would be a huge loss. I mean, if it was worth $4 billion 10 years ago, what is it worth now? After after making back only two point eight billion, according to Forbes, so they're in the hole. So 
what what is it worth now? Two billion? You know, I guess they could recoup what's left of the debt they have on it, I guess. And sell it for two billion to somebody. But that's what we want. We don't want Disney to be involved in any of it anymore. They 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 don't know what they're doing. The, the creative side is, is is total trash. Filoni's a mess. We just want them to get rid of it. Yeah, so you guys let me know in the comments. Do you agree with me on that? And uh, do you think that the whole strategy was just nuts how they went into the sequels? And does it, it does it make it meaningless? There's nothing new. Do you agree with all that? And uh, would you like to hear more from George, more specifics, and, and, and Disney and Iger as to why they just sort of pushed his ideas to the side? And not, they aren't just his. They're also, like I said, in the EU, some of them in favor of their own thing that turned out the way it did. <laughs> and do you think that that was ego-driven? That they just wanted to take over Star Wars, look what we can do, and then they just screwed it up completely. So let me know in the comment section if you like this content. Please like and subscribe. Always help the channel. Feel free to check out anything else on my channel. Have yourselves a really good day.